What's going on guys, my name is Basidio and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and episode 4 of my Billericay Rising series and um, if you joined us for the last episode, um, basically we went 5-5 um, five for five, uh, at the start of the season in terms of wins, so we've made a very very good start and we picked up um, a 3-0 win over Staines Town in the last episode as I said, but once again we have uh, another live com game to get through today, we've also got um, some team news, but we're going to start off by running through the highlights of the four games that have happened since our win over Staines Town. Okay, so our first set of highlights is from our trip to Worthing, and this one wasn't exactly a straightforward game for us. Um, we did have a very good chance to open the scoring, but uh, it just it went begging, and then inevitably Worthing took the lead. Uh, Jordan Graham bagging the goal there, and to be honest, I think they may have deserved it a little bit, but their lead didn't last very long as Louis Theophanos popped up with another goal and got things back on level terms for us and that's how it stayed for the remainder of the first half. In the second half um, they once again came out and they were the better side um, admittedly and inevitably it was Worthing again who took the lead. Uh, this time Nathan Linton getting the goal but I think Alan Julian probably should have done a lot better getting beaten in his near post like that he should have done a lot better for it and uh, yeah um, as the game wore on and Worthing were arguably the better side I was fearing the worst a little bit um, and then with just over 10 minutes left to go though uh, Simon Moller um, grabbed an equaliser it was a long ball over the top Louis Theophanos got on the end of it and just squared it and Simon Moller doesn't miss from there and that made it 2-2 and then inevitably with the tide turning there with that, uh, that equaliser we snagged a winner and again it was um, Theophanos and Moller um, linking up this time Moller turning the provider after getting a long ball over the top from Kebe and Theophanos doesn't miss from there back the second goal of the game and that's the way it stayed and we picked up um, quite a fortunate 3-2 win I'd say um, looking at the stats here you could probably say like I said Worthing probably just about edged it in terms of that but it's not always the quantity of the possession you have it's the quality and when the chances came for us we took them and that's what's important Next up, we are once again on our travels as we made our way to Fetchham Grove to face Kingstonian. And this game was, um, again, a little bit of um, a bit of an annoying one, to be honest with you. Because on paper, we should be steamrolling teams like this. But um, we made such hard work of it. And eventually, the we did get the opener, of course. Um, 45 minutes gone, Mo Adams' own goal. Probably should have been gifted to Danny Waldron, if I'm being honest. But it went down as a Mo Adams' own goal. And that gave us the lead. However, it didn't last for very long. As in the second half, um, just after the restart, Evan Green popped up with an equaliser. And that made it one all. And again, you could be, uh, it was starting to get to that point where maybe, just maybe, the 100% record was going to come to a grinding halt. But literally, with I think the last kick of the game, Jake Robinson pops up with a winner. The time on the clock when the ball hit the back of the net was 93 minutes and 59 seconds, and we had four added on minutes so literally the last kick of the game and I mean on the face of it looking at the stats it was relatively even but like I said I think I was more disappointed by the fact that not so much that you know it was even and we had to wait till the last minute it was just we should be beating teams like this a lot more convincingly so that really annoyed me and this game and the last game were a precursor to what was about to happen. Because next up we faced Harlow at home and this was a game where silly defensive errors really cost us. Uh, we took the lead early on, Danny Waldron with an absolutely brilliant header, he attacked it from deep and that gave us the, uh, the lead with six minutes gone. Uh, but like I said, silly defensive errors and it was basically just a, a nothing ball really and it dropped right to the feet of Fabian Sims, he's the only guy in the box and there's four of our defenders in there and it dropped right to his feet and he followed a bottom corner and that leveled the scores. In the second half we did retake the lead, uh, Simon Moller was brought down in the box and it was Danny Waldron who stepped up to dispatch the resulting free kick to bag his second goal of the game. 
But inevitably, it was once again another defensive lap which cost us. Um, and it was a long ball over the top from Sonko. And I don't know why or how Stevenson's getting on the end of this. Really should have been dealt with earlier. And all credit to him. It was a good first touch. He got it out of his feet and he finished it. But again, I think defensively we should have dealt with that. And also, I think the keeper maybe should have saved it. It went right through his legs. And... Uh, that was the way the score finished, so it was 2-2 uh, and uh, the 100% record came to a shuddering halt. And the final set of highlights we have for you is from our FA Cup first qualifying round fixture against Pontefract Collieries. And this one was ultimately a very disappointing display from us. Uh, I did make quite a few changes to bring in some of the guys that hadn't really started much in the opening part of the season. And to be honest, none of them really impressed me, if I'm honest. Uh, Billy Bricknell did have the ball in the back of the net, but it was ruled out for offside. Um, however, a few minutes later, we did actually take the lead. Uh, Jeremy Lynch with the corner, a couple of Pontefract defenders completely missed it. And Sam Deering uh, got the ball, nice touch, roof of the net, brilliant finish. Enough said on that one. But... Yeah, like I said, it was just disappointing because that's the way the score stayed. And even with wholesale changes to the side, we should be beating a team like this at home a hell of a lot more convincingly. Um, and the stats sort of tell the picture. We did have better at the possession, but yeah, I think everything else is just a little bit disappointing considering the level of opposition we had to face. So following those games, as you can see, we currently sit third in the Bostic League Premier Division. Um, we do have two games in hand over the two teams of brothers, uh, Tombridge Angels and Dulwich Hamlet. And if we win those two games in hand, we will return to the top of the table. Um, however, we the reason we're two games behind is we have had a couple of games rearranged uh, due to the, the start of the FA Cup. Um, but we'll take a look at that a little bit more in depth because we're now going to have a look at a bit of team news. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a bit of transfer news because as you can see we have a brand new player and it is this guy Evandro Racioni, a 27 year old Brazilian goalkeeper. I've been saying for the last few episodes we need to get a second goalkeeper, a backup goalkeeper in and to be honest of what I would consider a bad bunch this was the best that was available to us that would actually come um, in so he's come in um, he played his first game against uh, Pontefract Collieries in the FA Cup as you can see down here kept a clean sheet didn't really have much to do but what he did have to do he did okay with and uh, yeah we'll see if he can challenge um, Alan Julian we'll see it's not very it's not a case that he's coming in just to play back up if he can challenge and he can be better than Alan Julian then he will get game time and he will be our starting goalkeeper the other bit of team news we have to go through is on the uh, the whining front, I'm going to call it, as Ricky Modest has come to us um, complaining about first team football. I tried to defuse the situation, um, but he was very, very stubborn in demanding that he wanted first team football. And the two reasons he's not getting first team football is one, Jermaine Pennant has been in very, very good form so far this season and I'm not going to drop him just because someone comes to me whining about first-team football. And the other reason is, in the games that he has played and he started three games and made two substitute appearances, he's not exactly covered himself in glory with a 6.43 rating so far. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and maybe give him some game time to get him to turn his, you know, change his mind and, and stay with us because I would like to keep him in the squad. However, if he starts trying to disrupt and upset the team dynamic, then I'm going to get him out of there just to keep things more harmonious within the uh, within the squad. Now, with this one, I tried to uh, do it myself. But then a couple of days later, we had Sam Deering come to me um, and say basically along something along the same lines, I want 13 football, I want more football, blah, 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 blah. I did something a little bit different with this and I decided to let our captain Rob Swain talk to him instead. Now, when you consider that Sam Deering is all of five foot five, and Rob Swain is six foot five... <laughs> Can you just imagine this guy bearing down on you saying, you, you're okay with the amount of football you're getting. Don't rock the boat, all right? <laughs> so that's pretty much the tactic now. If anybody comes to me asking about first team football, I'm going to send Big Bob Swain in there to sort him out. That's the tactic. I'm six foot. 
<laughs> and, he's, and I can be quite imposing when I want to be. But this guy, he's my he's my now my new enforcer, my my squad harmony enforcer, my team dynamic enforcer, whatever you want to call it. This guy, if you have a problem about first team football, whining about it, you go whine to this guy, and he'll sort you out. So yeah, that was kind of funny, and I, I had a little bit of a laugh about that one. The other bit of news we have for you is from the injury front. Uh, Sanchez Watt once again picked up an injury. Now, he wasn't, I don't think, fully recovered from the thigh strain when he picked up this latest injury, which I think is a, uh, it was a twisted knee. And he's not too far away. Uh, yeah, it was a twisted knee. He was not too far away from full fitness at the time. I've got him in the reserve side just to build up a bit of conditioning and so on. And we'll see how he does. But as you can see, he's quite high, um, you know, in terms of injury susceptibility, he's quite injury prone. Um, so he's probably the team's sick note, I guess you could say. Uh, we'll see how he does, but I'm not going to rush him back into it because he can be a very, very good player for us. So I don't want to rush him back in. Um, we'll just we'll play it by ear and we'll see how he gets on. And the last little bit of news we have for you is on the cup front because as you saw, we beat Pontefract in the FA Cup first qualifying round, which means we get to progress. And in the second qualifying round, we were drawn at home to Market Drayton. Again, these are a little bit of a step up in terms of, um, you know, when compared to Pontefract. So they're still below us, but we're going to have to probably be, we're going to have to perform a lot better than we did against Pontefract to get the win, I feel. And I probably won't make as many wholesale changes because... This is one of the cups we said we'd get to the second round of the FA Cup, I think, in terms of the expectations. So I am taking this one seriously and I will have to um, select the teams as such, uh, so to speak. Um, the other cup we were drawing in, though, is the Estemian League Cup second round. This is one the board really don't care about, so I probably will use this as an opportunity to bring in some of the, maybe some of the younger lads and give them some first team football Um We'll see how we do in this one, but like I said, because the board don't really care about it, I'm not really going to put massive amounts of importance on it, and I will probably just use it to blood some of the youngsters, so to speak. But now we're going to move on to today's live com game, which, as we've mentioned, is a way to Harrow Borough. And well, it, well, I say that, but it almost wasn't because. With the FA Cup starting and with replays being, you know, going back and forth, we've had a couple of games rearranged. Firstly, the Harrow Borough game was rearranged, so it was going to be Brightling C. And then the Brightling Sea game was rearranged, so it became Harrow Borough again for this live come episode. So it's been a bit up and down, but because of those um, those changes and those replays and so on, it means we've had a two near enough a two week break. So we should be you know batteries recharged, raring to go after a very very busy and involved start to the season. Um, but yeah, we're against Harrow Borough. We're away from home. Um, take a look at the staff. Um, the manager Steve Baker pretty good in these areas you know man management and motivating a pretty good good working with youngsters very good adaptability but in terms of tactical knowledge as you can see could be better a one <laughs> uh sorry steve um judging player potential and ability i don't really put much stock in that to be honest with you because i just send the scouts out to do it but again that's you know it is what it is this is the guy we've got to face so there he is um the captain is <laughs> curtis cumberbatch benedict's younger brother i assume um, yeah, 21 years old, he's an attacking midfielder, um, had an okay start to the season maybe, you know, 6-8-6, 9 game, or 10 appearances and 1 goal, so yeah, he's the captain, um, their vice captain is another youngster, uh, Lezion Seller, an 18 year old Albanian centre midfielder, um, he's also their hot prospect apparently as well, and the key player is, S I, pr I think I pronounced this right, Sahir Kaba. Uh, 28 year old English forward um, one goal from three games this season so not brilliant form but I don't know don't know why he started so few games could have been injured who knows and in terms of the form as you can see they've been a bit up and down um, they drew with uh, the leatherhead sorry the leatherhead they drew with the leatherhead who's the leatherhead make it sound like a fucking monster <laughs> the leatherhead um, yeah so they drew with the leatherhead one all um, then they beat um, Merstham I think I pronounced that correctly uh, that's a really funny one, Merse them. Weird name. Uh, they beat them 2-1, and then they played Osset Town in the FA Cup. Of course, um, fellow FM YouTuber GWFM is um, currently in Osset Town, I think it is. He's in Osset, he's, in, um, he's just outside of Leeds, I believe it is. Um, so they drew 2-2, and then in the replay they lost 1-0. And then they lost to Needham Market as well. So, like I said, a bit up and down in terms of form. They're currently sitting in 14th in the league, so we should realistically be wiping the floor with guys like this we should be doing that 
Uh, top goal scorers are Ryan Moss and uh, Lezion Seller. Uh, most assists is uh, Michael Bryan, Charles Bryan, um, so, sorry, Charles Banya and Ryan Moss again. And the, uh, the most player of the match was Lezion Seller. So, yeah, we'll see how we do. I'm confident going into this. Despite being away from home, I think this is a game we really should be winning because they haven't been brilliant form-wise and... Not being arrogant, we've got the best squad in the league. So we should be winning this one convincingly. But what we're going to do now is I am going to jump down to the pitch. We're going to take a look at the team lineups and then we're going to get this game underway. So see you down there. Okay then guys, so here we are just ahead of kickoff and here are the teams. And we'll start off with the home side first of all. So we've got um, Melvin Minter <laughs> in goal. And we've got Hall, Lander, uh, Uja and U Uaid. I think that's how you pronounce it. I apologise if it's not. Um, starting in um, as the centre, sorry, the, the defensive line, so to speak. Uh, we've got Sheriff playing in the defensive midfield role with Thomas and Seller in the centre of midfield. I was having a look at Thomas, actually, but he decided and opted to go um, to Harrow Borough instead. So that's fine. And then we've got Brian and Banya starting on the right and left with, as we said, the, uh, the key player for the team. So here, Cabba starting up front for ourselves. Alan Julian returns in goal after sitting out the FA Cup win over uh, Pontefract in the last game we've played. And then we've got Kebe, Payne, Inman and Smith making up the back line. Uh, Walsrin once again partnering Jamie O'Hara in the centre of midfield. Then we've got Jermaine Pennant and Jermaine Lynch, uh, sorry, Jeremy Lynch and starting on the right and left of midfield with Moller and Theophanos starting up top. In terms of the team talk, um... I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that one really. Uh, we we really should be winning games like this with uh, without much trouble. Um, I don't want to be big headed and you know disrespect any teams, but we really should be. So I'm gonna tell them that. And uh, yeah, let's get things kicked off. We should be winning this game. Like I said, we've had a it's been a slow decline recently in terms of the quality of our performances. Let's be honest. So. Um, I'm looking for this one to be a big win and to sort of get us back on track, get us back in the groove of things, so to speak. So first proper highlight, we're just over five minutes gone and that was a terrible free kick and here's Kebe now with a chance for us to potentially break his Theophanos. He's got space ahead of him to run into. He's got a bit of support and he just fell over but here's Pennant picking up the loose ball, Moller, and it's 1-0. Hint of offside maybe, potentially. The flag, didn't, the flag hasn't gone up, it stayed down and we're 1-0 up and um, yeah, I'm not going to complain. So as you can see, Theophanos picked up the ball, that's had lots of space ahead of him. And then, um, I don't know, you could probably say that maybe was a foul, but uh, Pennant picks it up, keeps his composure, just crosses it across the box and uh, Moller with a simple tap in. And uh, yeah, hello Burrow nil, Billy Ricky Town 1. Okay, so another highlight with uh, just under 10 minutes gone now. Is Seller going to Cabo? Sheriff to Thomas. This is the one thing that I was kind of worried about with this formation is that they're going to be playing those triangle games around us, which I do not like and uh, can be the downfall of any team. But here's Moller with the ball to Theophanos, who just about gets it. Theophanos with a chance, and uh, it's a good save from Minter at his near post. And it's going to be a corner now. Now it's going to be O'Hara to take it. It goes towards the centre, and it's nodded away by Thomas. And that's the end of that. Yeah, so another highlight. Alan Julian with a long punt upfield looking for someone, but uh, doesn't find anyone. Uh, but now here's Waldron with a pass, and that's very, very poor from him. And now we may be under it again. Here's Banya looking to get the better of Elliot Kebe, but he makes a very good tackle. And here's Theophanos. He's got a bit of space. He's got support from Muller, and it's 2-0. And he can just turn that quickly. And you know what? Elliot Kebe does that so often. He picks up the ball and then just makes the right pass. An absolutely brilliant pass. And I can tell you he learned that at Leeds United. Ooh, maybe a, ooh, maybe a hint of offside. I don't know whether this guy down here, this number two Hall, was playing him on. But it did look a little bit offside. But again, the flag stayed down. And it's Harrow Burrow nil, Billericay 2. Okay, so the rain is coming down now. We've got about 20 minutes of the half left. Here's Lynch. Now he's got a bit of support ahead of him. Found Moller. Can he get his hat trick? He can. <laughs> Simon Moller, absolutely on fire. What else can you say, really? And nice little assist there from Jeremy Lynch. He played very, very well. 
against um, Pontefract in the FA Cup. So I decided to keep him in rather than bringing in um, Dale Jennings again. And he justified that decision. It's a very good ball through. Maybe took a little bit of a nick off a defender. And the keeper probably should have done better because it's like straight down his throat. But Simon Moller with his second hat trick of the season. Harrow Burrow nil, Billericay three. So another highlight now. Uh, we're just over half hour left to go. Been just goals galore so far from each of our highlights. But uh, Minter's going to pick up that loose ball and uh, lumps it down the line. Kebe intercepts, but it's Thomas now. The ball over the top. Inman caught completely napping, and Cabas pulled one back. And oh, that's disappointing. That really is. Dean Inman just caught completely on his heels. So yeah, Sheriff picks up the loose ball. Here's Thomas. Like I said, we were looking at him. It's a long ball over the top, and Inman just caught with his feet planted. And it was a good finish. I think maybe Julian should have at least dived for it, but uh, there we go. Harrow Borough 1, Billericay 3. So I've just given them a little bit of encouragement there to help them uh, maybe push on and regain that three goal lead. He's still a to Moller, and this time Minter saves. It was right at him. And there's half time. So, yeah, very, very good through the opening 25 minutes, but then it's just that little lapse. There's always that little lapse, and we got punished by it. So, um, we're going to have to... I don't want to say don't get complacent because we've got a two-goal buffer still. So, I'm just going to tell them to... Um, uh, I'm just going to tell them that... Uh, hmm, it's a tough one. I'm just going to to keep going. I'm just going to have to tell them to keep going. If we've got the right reaction there, I think I'm not going to overcomplicate things by giving um, selected you know, talks to departments or individual players. So, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it was just that one silly mistake and we got punished by it. So... I think if we can go on and get a fourth goal within the first, you know, five, ten minutes of the half, I think we'll be okay. And I, don't, I think we'll kill off any possibility of a revival potentially. But um, you never know. Stranger things have happened. And the rain is still coming down as we get kicked off again. Uh, probably a nothing opening highlight, really. You never know, though. We might get that fourth goal we're craving. It's Lynch. Coming inside to Waldron, who goes back to Lynch. Got a bit of support and it's uh, cleared by Lander in his cabin now. The score of uh, Harrow Burrow's goal is Banya. Goes inside but Waldron mops up and here's Inman now. The uh, the offender for the mistake. But Theo Fallis has got a lovely bit of uh, support from Moller in the centre. Can he find him? He can and there's 4-1 and less than a minute gone into the second half. And we've got that fourth goal that I said we wanted. And it's Simon Moller once again with the, his fourth goal he's absolutely on fire today he really is and honestly I'm going to give it to the guys who are putting on the assist because he's not really had much to do they've just all been tappings basically you know you have to finish what's put in front of you of course but the quality of the deliveries has been very very good and uh, yeah we're rocking ok then so uh, 10 minutes of the half gone just over and um, yeah we're very much in control and not really much else to say uh, we're very, very, um, we're looking very good in terms of the uh, the fitness and the conditioning. Here's Muller again, and it's a penalty. We've got a penalty. I think it's going to be Danny Waldron to take it. I think he is our, our best penalty taker. And uh, yes, it is. So Danny Waldron with a chance to make it 5-1, and he does. Brilliant penalty. Top corner. Minter had no chance. That's his third goal of the season. And um, I'll probably start thinking about changes now. Like I said, no one is looking really tired because we've had such a long break between games. But I think I might just make some just to uh, just to make these a little bit easier. Okay then, so we're going to make changes. We've got about 25 minutes left to go. Uh, I'm going to bring Jamie O'Hara off uh, for Sam Deering. Sam Deering was a little bit unfortunate to miss out on starting this game because he did do very, very well in the last game. But... Um, yeah, we're going to bring him on now because Jamie O'Hara is maybe getting a little bit tired. 70% is like my threshold personally. I don't know what it's like for you guys, but that's my threshold. So um, just a straight swap pretty much. Uh, Sam Deering on for Jamie O'Hara. Um, that's all I really need to make right now. Okay, so another highlight with 20 minutes left to go. It's a ball in there for the centre. It's Waldron and it's a good block. But it's a corner. Waldron probably should have finished that. Maybe should have taken it first time on the volley. But like I said, we've got a corner. Pennant goes towards the near post. And it's uh, clear. And here's Seller now with a chance to maybe catch us on the break. It's a long ball over the top looking for Cabba, who's uh, a little bit isolated right now. He goes into the centre and Alan Julian makes simple work of it. 
Okay, so I'm going to make a couple more changes and um, just to kind of safeguard against him potentially getting an injury, I'm going to bring Moller off uh, for Jake Robinson. Um, so Robinson will go into his favoured advanced uh, forward role and I'm also going to bring off Elliot Kebe as well because I want to bring Foley in. Uh, Foley's not had a good start to the season so I want to get him more game time, get him maybe, uh, you know, kick up the backside he needs to maybe start performing a little bit better so uh final two changes kebe uh sorry kebe off for of foley and Moller off for robinson so we've got about 20 seconds of the game left and we've done what we needed to do today i said we needed to kind of you know these are the teams we should be sweeping aside making easy work of and uh like i said we've done that today so i don't really have any complaints barring that little mistake that's the only uh there's full time. Yeah, like I said, barring that little mistake, that's the only uh, downside for this game. Um, so, very, very good performance. Very pleased. Can't really say better. Can't really say more, can I? Because they've just done absolutely everything that I asked them to. I'm going to single out uh, Moller for a little bit of a uh, little bit of praise there. Um, additionally, also, I mean, there's so many I could choose from. I mean, uh, Pennant and um, and Theophanos were also very good. Uh, Lynch had a very good game as well. I think I will give those guys some um, some praise there as well. Uh, but yeah, very very good result and kind of breaks that little uh, that little duck where we're starting to descend in terms of our um, in terms of the quality of our performances and making things a little bit harder than we had to. Uh, but yeah, so we move up to second place in the table, we're two points behind Tombridge Angels, but we do have a game in hand as you remember. And yeah, very very good five one win. Nice little uh, live come game for you guys. Uh, in terms of what we're going to come back to, though, um, hmm, I'm a little bit unsure. I think we might be lost off town. I don't want to come back for highs because it's a nothing game. And if we come back for lost off town, then I can do three highlights in the next one and then have Tombridge Angels, which could be a top of the table clash. So uh, lost off town will be our next live com game uh, but today's episode is at an end so thank you everybody so much for watching if you did enjoy and you would like to see more uh, football manager 2018 and Bill Ricky rising content from myself then make sure you leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe uh, but again thank you guys so much for watching take care and as always I will catch you in the next video peace